Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Today, Andrea connects with singer-songwriter Joy Dame to talk about how God opens doors through collaboration and co-writing. We also get to hear one of Joy's original songs at the end of the episode, so be sure to stick around for that. Well, hey everyone, it's Andrea Sandifer, uh, your host for today's episode, and I am so excited to be joined by my friend Joy. Uh, Joy Dame and I met almost two years ago now, can you believe it? And um, at least I think it was, wasn't it 2020 when we yeah. traveled? Okay. I was trying to do the math real quick and I was doubting myself. So we traveled to the uh, Nashville area to attend a songwriters conference and we met there and it was so good to just meet you in person and hear your heart behind just your mission and your songwriting and uh, what you're all about. So I'm excited to share some of that with everybody else today. So welcome, Joy. Thanks. And I loved meeting you there. I remember hearing your song. I was like, I want to write with that girl. I loved her bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. That's right. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. It is a fun bridge. And uh, we just sang that uh, song in church the other day. And I thought of you. It was like, oh, that's this so is funny. Joy's bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bridge girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Joy, why don't you kick us off and just share a little bit about yourself, where you're from, a bit about your family and uh, what you do. Um, I am from Florida now, but I'm originally from Michigan, which is where I'm sitting right now at my parents' yeah. house. Um, and, um, I have three boys. I'm married, um, my Bible college sweetheart, <laughs> I guess you could say. And, um, and, uh, the Lord called me a songwriting, um, very specifically, um, when I was in the mission field in France. So that was about, it was about 15 years ago. Um, and, uh, I won't get too much into that, but, um, so, um, and I, and I've loved singing since I was a kid. So, um, so that's another part of my life is, is trying to record things and, and, uh, get releases out and all that stuff too. So, and then, uh, and the other part is just wanting to encourage indie artists. Um, that's a huge passion of mine. So, um, on their journey of, um, sharing hope with the world. So, yeah, that's really cool. And I know one of the biggest reasons I wanted to talk to you today was because of your passion for co-writing. And I think that is mm -hmm. something that a lot of us are afraid to do. <laughs> and, uh, and it took me a while and I, and I honestly, I've co-written with you a couple of times and, I've co-written with my worship pastor a couple of times, but I'm still, I still feel like I'm missing some of the golden nuggets of, uh, the beauty of it. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. to talk to you about that today. And, um, so yeah, so God kind of called you in to songwriting, just being passionate from a young age, have just passionate about music and, um, how have you, uh, served in music, um, like through through student being a student uh, did you go to college for that I did not I always wanted to um I really wanted to get a degree in music um but the Lord had other plans <laughs> so I just remember kind of just having to give that up to the Lord and surrender and say you know I knew at the same time he was pulling my heart for missions and mm -hmm. um and I knew that if I went to college I was going to be in a lot of debt in that I probably wouldn't make it to the mission field anytime soon. So um, I, I still remember the day I just kind of gave it up to the Lord and said, Lord, like, I know, I really know in my heart right now that you give me a piece about missions and you want me to do that. And so I'm just going to give this dream of finishing college. Um, I, I went to two years of Bible school, but I wanted to continue and get a bachelor's in music. And, um, and I gave it up to him. Um, and what's cool is that he just, opened up the doors for music in other ways. And so just allowed me to travel all over the world. And so I'm just like amazed by the Lord, like his sovereignty, you know, there's still times where I'm like, Oh, it'd be so nice if I had gotten all that theory under my belt and became amazing pianist and all this stuff along, along with it. But that's the beauty of co-writing too. <laughs> so Yes. Oh, but I love that, that, you know, God's plan for your education look different. 
and it's Mm -hmm. because of where he wanted you to be and and trusting that and I think it's beautiful the way he's brought it about so it's really Mm -hmm. encouraging actually so yeah (laughs) yeah no no music uh education in college here either joy so uh, (laughs) you're in good company (laughs) yeah yeah it it kind of becomes it becomes something that like in the past has has um I know the enemies try to use that against me. Like, you're not going to be good enough. You're never going to be good enough, blah, 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 you know, but um, just getting into writing more, I was like, you know what? I'm going to study about writing. I'm going to study about songwriting. Like I might not be able to afford Berkeley college of music, but I can order all their used books online and go through them. And so, so there's other ways to try to do your best to, to keep studying and learning. So (laughs) that's a good, that's good advice actually to kind of, um, if you can't do the traditional, you know, college route or, um, the Berkeley's or the Liberty's or, you know, those kind of things Mm -hmm. that, uh, a lot of people strive to do, but just can't, is that something you have done as you've purchased books from their, um, from like their class sessions and stuff? Yeah, they actually, um, they have, they, I mean, there's so much stuff online now you can follow all these teachers that Mm -hmm. teach at Berkeley on YouTube and all of that stuff. I'm not saying that it replaces the education, but their books, even the books that they use in their courses, um, I was able to find them at music stores for like 30 bucks each. And then I looked online and found them used for $15 each. So um, they have some great books out, lyrics, lyric book uh, to teach you about the lyric structure, rhyming structure, um, melody, um, harmony, all that stuff. So I still have to finish the harmony one. And I'm sure I need to still study the other ones again and again and again, you know, just yeah, to get better. Yeah. So, but it definitely has helped me a lot because people used to say like, are you lyrics or melody? And I'm thinking, well, if my melodies are all sounding the same, then I probably should study melody and get better at this. And so um, those, those kind of things have helped a lot. So, and, That's and of course, cla- you know, courses and classes, there's so much available now. It's, it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, it is. And you're right. There is a lot available. And so it shouldn't be as much of a stumbling block as we maybe make it to be um, yeah. that we don't have that formal education. So cool, cool tips. I like that. Still, I still have lots to learn though. Oh, amen <laughs> I'm to that. I'm not saying that I'm some expert at any of these books, but I, but um, I also love um, Pavalash's God songs um, yeah. in the middle of that. And there's just, there's so much out there and there's a lot of classes and courses that um, yeah, that there's a lot of people out there that are helping us. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of people that are passionate about helping uh, mm-hmm. other songwriters grow in their, in their gifts and their talents. And it's, it's really encouraging. So yeah, I'm glad we got to meet at a conference where we were both trying to learn. <laughs> it's yes, very good, yeah. So. <laughs> well, cool, Joy. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about your music. What do you love to write about? What are the messages that God um, is having you share through your music? Um, well, I'm passionate about two different things. I'm passionate about worship. Um, I, I'm a worship leader at heart and at my churches. Um, but, um, I'm also very passionate about sharing the gospel in music. And so, um, worship music looks different than music maybe that will reach the next generation. Um, and so that music for me, um, you know, speaks about hope and life and, um, that there's a God who loves you and that, you know, in your depression, you can find him and, and those different things and how you have a purpose for living. Um, and then sharing the gospel, of course, with them, sharing, sharing Christ and sharing the reason why you're, you're here, you know, and then the worship songs, you know, obviously are, aimed at Christians. And so a little bit deeper spiritually, theologically, um, and just encouraging the Christian in their walk. Um, and I say worship songs, but also, um, I, I have a passion to also write worship songs that are great for teenagers and maybe people that don't usually like listen to worship songs, but right. making it kind of in their Christian genre. So, um, uh, we used to work with Christian camping. And so, I always say to some oh. co-writers, I'm like, let's make this a camp song, like an upbeat worship camp song, you know, that teenagers would love that maybe has a little rap part in it or whatever. And, and that's the kind of le- music and worship that the teenagers are doing that is reaching that generation. So I'm passionate about both the church music for congregations and, you know, so it could be a co-write from a hymn all the way to totally a rap song <laughs> so oh, but, love um, it. I feel like there's a place for all of that and the people that 
need to hear the gospel need to hear it in their own language. They need to hear it in their genre and not in something that they would not necessarily listen to. So amen to that. I love the (laughs) idea of setting the table with all types of things for Mm -hmm. the kingdom of God to come about. And I, yeah, we have to, we're, yeah, we need all (laughs) sorts of music. Amen to that. Uh, and all sorts of books. We need all sorts of messages out there. We Mm -hmm. need all sorts of shows. You know, we have a lot of different, uh, creatives that, uh, join us in listening and watching online. And it is so fun to see all of the various things that everyone is doing. Um, and it's, it's just, it's inspiring. And of course God is using it all. So I love that. Cool. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about co-writing because I, I have experienced some of the benefits of it. I still stumble a little bit because I'm so used to writing just here in my own room by myself. And, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I get too comfortable. I think sometimes, uh, Mm -hmm. doing that, uh, doing it that way. And there is a time and a place for writing by yourself, Mm -hmm. of course, but I would love to, um, really tap into some of what you've seen as far as the benefits and the power of collaborating with others. So let's talk about co-writing. Um, wow. There's just so much to say. <laughs> How short do we need to keep this? <laughs> <laughs> How I'm much time like, do we have? <laughs> about this subject. Like I'm so passionate, but like I had one friend that just said like, you're addicted. And I'm like, yes, I am. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, like for the, for the, for the one side of it, for the, the fellowship and the Bible study and the, it was, it's the encouragement that you're able to give each other. Like, I feel mm. like every time that we have a co-write, um, we are sharing, um, about what's going, what God's been doing in our life, maybe about things that we've walked through. Um, and you know, some of the, some of the deeper co-writes that, uh, that I've had with like, for example, my friend in Nashville, Damari, um, like where she's like sharing her life secrets mm-hmm. with me and trying to put them into a song. Like, um, I mean, we just like ball our eyes out and then write a song, you know, it's just, so, uh, I, I just said at the, the, the conference that we had, um, like if you can't afford therapy, co-writing is co-writing is therapy. <laughs> like, <laughs> because you're just, I would just, it's just amazing how the Lord allows you to encourage each other in a co-write. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Like it, when you get a little bit off topic, it's okay. You can come back. But a lot of times this topic of the song, you know, goes into just encouraging each other. And then other times when writing a worship song, like, um, there's been times where we've done Bible study ahead of time and then shared all that together to really write a deeper song mm-hmm. or in the middle of the song, like we're just throwing Bible verses in there and reading at one after another and just, just really encouragement in the word of God. So it's basically like a Bible study and then you're just putting it to music. <laughs> so, um, that's awesome. And then, um, I could tell you stories that are just like crazy, like about how God has ordained certain topics for certain people to write with. Mm. Um, man, I, I just don't know how much time we have, but like there was this, <laughs> there's this like one random number that I kept seeing on the clock and I was like, okay, I'm not like, like this, like where I'm like, Oh, I keep seeing this. This must mean something, but it was not even coincidental. Like every mm. time I looked at the clock, it was like seven 11, nine 11, 111. It was so weird. And I was like, God, do you want me to write a song about this number? You know? And so anyway, I won't get too much into it because it would give the story away, but, um, it was exactly what my friend needed that number. Like it it was just crazy. So, um, like we, she started telling me about her life and how she'd been betrayed. And I said, I think I have a song title for you that the Lord just kept putting on my heart. And I was like, it's called 11. And and then we get at the end, we can talk about how Jesus was betrayed and he knows how that feels. And like, even when I talk about it now, I get goosebumps because the mm. song, like just God brought the concept. It's like, where would I get that concept? That's just so random, you know? And, um, and, uh, and that's happened several times, um, where, where I've been starting to write a song. Um, there was one song that I was working on about, um, unity and, um, and uh, division and all of this stuff for a long time uh, about how our country is just struggling with this and the world. And um, I just kept saying, man, I need to finish this with this with someone that's not my color. This is not my battle. I just hurt for those who 
who have to struggle with this. And so I just kept putting it away and I like worked on it and like kind of completed a song kind of, but I was like, this is not ready. It, I need to co-write this, you know? Mm. And, um, and when I was in Nashville at a, a, another conference in March, um, I randomly by God's providence met someone in the, uh, in the parking lot and, um, said, you're an artist, aren't you? Cause he was singing. And, uh, and, and, we just started talking. I was like, what kind of music do you write? Blah, blah, blah. And sing. And, and, uh, and I was like, man, I'd like to co-write with you sometime. Well, during that conference, we ended up starting co-write and he wanted to start co-writing that song, like finish that song. And it turned into a whole nother song and it became so powerful. And, um, and that happened with so many of the songs that, you know, maybe they were good, but they weren't great. And when you co-write, your songs can be great because you have two or three people and there's strong points going into the song, you know, and I wouldn't even say that that song was good before, you know, like I didn't even have a melody yet. because I was like, oh, it's not good enough, you know, and that's the thing is we always criticize our own work, you know, so, oh, yeah. so but God continues to do that with so many of the ideas I have as long as as long as I'm willing to let them go. Um, he just did that with another idea and, and it, and on Friday it's being pitched to a publisher and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like Aww. just because I was willing to let it go, you know, like I wasn't like, Oh no, this needs to be my song or I got to finish this on my own or, you know, and, and the power of writing with another strong writer that, um, you know, is passionate about the same subject or, um, and that's neat as God brings different people in your life and you just know you click in the writing room, um, so I've just loved to see, I mean, it's, it's all God It is literally just like not even coincidental. It's amazing how God has just, just opened those doors. It's, it's just yeah. mind, blo- it's mind blowing. I'm just so humbled. Like, <laughs> it's just yeah. amazing. And I, I agree with so much of what you just said, because I think what I see, one of the biggest uh, things to get excited about when we enter into any kind of collaborative effort is the, that idea of we can all come with something good mm-hmm. and God can take those nuggets of goodness and create something great. And mm-hmm. just like the idea of that, that number 11, it was resonating in you for some reason. And you didn't know why you didn't even realize that that was a nugget that somebody else needed. And it's, it's almost like a picture of the church, you know, when you consider, you know, that we're all different members of a body and we can't function rightly or well on our own. And when we're able to come together and use our strengths, our, those nuggets of goodness and, uh, serve each other and encourage each other. Like you said, it's just, it's beautiful. And I, I, I'm never, <laughs> I'm expecting good things to always come out of those kind of interactions, you know, good songs. Mm-hmm. Of course I would, I would, you know, of course they're not all going to be great, but, um, it can't hurt <laughs> to collaborate <laughs> with others. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know why we don't do it more often, but, um, yeah. Or I don't know why I don't do it more often. Maybe I should <laughs> clarify that. So, well, but, uh, I'm... it, okay. it is, it takes a, a certain amount of like vulnerability and also, yeah. and also being willing to give up parts of there's some songs that you're supposed to write to get together and some songs you're not supposed to, you know? Right. And so um, I think we all can identify with that kind of yeah. fear of, Oh, you know, I don't know what will happen to it, but as the Lord brings you to the right people. And I'm just amazed at who those right people are for the songs. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just, I'm just shocked. Like, oh, wow, this turned out amazing with these two people that are like, we're like 30 years apart, you know, or like total (laughs) different like life stages. And God still like, God just works through his believers. It's his Holy Spirit. Like one of my co-writers said that once she said, once I learned that it's about the Lord's anointing on a song and on on, on people, then a co-writing totally changed for me. And I think Mm -hmm. that's the thing is, is coming into a room, leaving your ego at the door or your pride or your ideas of what, um, of what, you know, you can bring to a right or what someone else might bring to a right and just letting God work and, and listening to the Holy spirit and, and his concepts. And, um, it's a powerful thing. Yeah. Oh, amen. Um, okay. 
tell us about this retreat that you guys, you, you're just coming off of it, right? Cause you're still in Michigan and that's where the retreat yeah. was, right? So yeah. what, what did God ask of you and how did you bring this about? I love this. <laughs> um, it actually started at the retreat where we were. Okay. <laughs> it was, it started then. And, um, and you know, I was just like, oh man, like just overwhelmed with how encouraging that weekend was. And I remember just sitting there and saying, Lord, I would love to do this someday. I would love mm -hmm. to encourage other artists. Um, I would love to be able to, and, and I saw the Lord be able to use me in friendships there, just being able to like, you know, um, just encourage the good that I saw in people and be like, Hey, you're really good at this or, or, you know, keep it up or just things like that, you know? And I know, because I know how that feels as a songwriter or an artist, because when you don't have anyone come encourage you, just think, well, I'm, I'm really bad at this, you know, like us, we're so self-critical. We're always thinking down on ourselves, you know, artists are like that anyway, most of them. So, so, um, so there was just a, only a couple people that had ever done that for me about songwriting and mm -hmm. it literally changed my world it encouraged my heart so much just to have anyone that knew anything about music, say something to me, like just encourage me to follow what I knew God was calling me to do. Um, because there's a lot of discouragement and silence out there and that ends up being, it's hurtful, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and so, um, that's a whole nother subject, but, but, um, but, uh, then later I was, I just prayed and I was like, well, whenever, you know, I'm not ready yet, you know? And then, um, this February actually was on the way back from my mom-in-law's funeral and we're on the road and just praying over these different things, talking to one of my co-writer friends and saying, someday I want to do you know, a retreat in Michigan, because there's a lot of songwriters there and maybe other places. And, and I literally just felt God say to my heart, why are you waiting? Why not now? And my first response always, you know, was like, oh, I'm not ready or oh, I'm not good enough or whatever. But I didn't do it that time. I just said, okay, Lord, okay, I'm just going to reach out. And so on that trip, on the way back from Rhode Island, I was just messaging um, some different songwriters um, um, that I knew that I, I think I'd written with all of the, the ones that I invited to come and speak. And, um, they all said yes right away. And, and I was like, okay, well, here we go. Like, <laughs> here, Let's we go, do it. <laughs> here we go, Lord. And I, I'm going to tell you there, the enemy really tried to discourage a lot. And he just like, man, so many things happen where, uh, I even had someone tell me like, maybe you should cancel it. Like you could totally cancel it. I'm thinking, no, I can't like God asked me to do this. Like he didn't say like next year, like, I think he wants this to happen this summer, you know? So, um, but he worked it all out. I mean, he provided a car and he provided this and that and the other, and I know he's going to, you know, keep moving. So, so, um, it was, it was amazing. Like, I think we're all still on that camp high right now. So <laughs> yeah, it's a real thing. And so yeah. you guys just, you gathered, it was, it looked like a beautiful location and it looked like you guys just kind of you had some songwriting, like co-writing sessions with the, like big groups, even how many people were there? Um, you know, people keep asking me that and I'm like, uh, between eight and 11, <laughs> it depended, <laughs> it depended. <laughs> it depended on the day because, um, I, I had a burden to make it a little longer than the conferences I'd been to, because I wanted there to be teaching and co-writing and encouragement and in order to fit all that stuff in a lot of the, these retreats just have co-writing and I thought it'd be just awesome to have um some teaching and some encouragement along with that like awesome. in order to fit fit like people travel for this so I wanted to make it long enough that if people want to stay you know four nights and and co-write the whole time you know and and get gleam all, all, all what the speakers were saying and what the pastor was sharing and stuff, um, than they could. So, um, everybody tried to stay as much as they could. And most people like about half of us were able to stay the whole time. A couple of people had to leave one day early and they were super bummed to have to do that. But, um, you know, hopefully next time they could stay the whole time, but even if, even if, if not, they still got three nights and four days and it was, it was really sweet. So, and then we had a couple people, that just kind of joined in like there was one guy that just joined in halfway because his sister was going and I invited him like to stay for part of the time and then he was like I wish I would have signed up and I'm like well you can now like just stay if you Aww. want you know so so it was neat how the Lord just brought the right people there it was just a sweet group of people um yeah it was just it was amazing so 
I'm, and this is maybe just my curiosity, but how did you logistically make this happen? So you reached out to everyone via text. You had some contacts already, but like you had to seek out a location or did you already have one? And then it sounds like you had speakers and you had a pastor. So like you, you kind of created a schedule for this retreat and, and then you had to reach out and actually ask people to come help and teach and everything. Yeah, actually I started out by reaching out to ask for help because um, it definitely is a team thing. I think it's a team thing. Maybe some people could do it by themselves, but I just, I wanted there to be speakers there that would really be able to help speak and lead worship. And, and, um, and uh, so that was through Facebook messenger. That's my friend yes. <laughs> so, or Instagram messenger, you know, um, but um but then uh, when I knew that I had a few people like already, you know, willing to come, then, then I, the reason why I was going to do it in Michigan in the first place is because I was going to use my parents' place, but um, the whole world kind of went upside down and my parents, my dad had a stroke since then, um, just a bunch of stuff happened and it just wasn't the right place. Um, and so all of a sudden the place that I thought, you know, cause they were excited about having everybody. They were so excited mm. to like, see this new ministry being born and, and, um, but it just, it was too much stress and too much on my parents and I just didn't feel peace about it. And so I started looking at other places. And of course then, you know, what I charged was like, not going to cover everything if we didn't get enough people and all these things. And I just kept like, actually several, several songs about trusting the Lord were, were, um, born during that period. Um, <laughs> yes. And, oh yes. Yes. And I just remember like literally just crying out to God, like, did I hear you wrong? Like, was this a mistake? Like, I don't see how, you know, going into debt for this is a good idea, you know, like all this mm -hmm. stuff, but, but, um, you know, it's like that, that age old phrase that where God guides, he provides. And mm -hmm. I totally have seen that every single time, that he's asked me to do something that I didn't, that I wasn't able to pay for, um, or even just go do some, like go somewhere like to France, you know, like we had nothing and God just provided what we need needed when we needed it. And, um, and I totally have seen him do that on my music journey. I could just tell you so many stories that just have made me ball, like how, like he provided when he decided it was the time. So, um, so yeah, we found, I found some other VRBOs and then things happen with those. And I had to cancel that and get a new VRBO. And even the new VRBO that we were staying at, um, you know, there was just, you could tell the enemy was just really trying to discourage me about some things, you know, but I was just like, no, like everything worked out. Okay. And we had a beautiful place. And um, I'm just so thankful that the Lord just, um, you know, there was just a sweet spirit there and, and the Lord just worked everything out and um, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> so it just really was, it was an amazing, sweet time. And, um, I just will look back on this past week as like, with fond memories, like it just feels like songwriting family. And that was really my prayer. Like my biggest prayers were that God would bring the right people, that we would feel like songwriting family, um, that the songs we wrote would be super powerful and the Holy spirit would move and, and that everyone would go with that people would be touched in their lives and their personal spiritual lives in a different way mm -hmm. and um I mean I just like sometimes I came and the last couple of days like people call me and be like how was it and I'm like it was so good <laughs> you know, like, I'm like I'm just amazed at what God did you know so yeah oh it's it was awesome beautiful it was beautiful so well I'm that's, so that's all glad him. all him it's just oh. all his sovereign hand <laughs> Praise God. It is, it's exciting. And it was fun to watch from afar as you were kind of building toward that. And I was like, what a great idea. And so I'm, I'm so Praise yeah. God. Praise bravo. God. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, you touched on it a little bit that, um, sometimes it's hard to know, like once, once you have a song or, you know, what to do next, like, so that, that process of walking something forward and trusting God, um, how do you approach your bank of songs? And you know, because it's, it does, it costs money to produce things well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, sometimes that can be a big limitation, but, um, I know that, uh, I know that journey well as, uh, but I would love to hear and just have you share about 
how you approach your work and how you approach what projects to try to work on and release? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's just like, obviously producers need to be paid. They spend a lot of time on these projects. And um, I remember when I first like found out how much it costs to produce a song, like the typical producer rate that was like even cheaper, you know, than the ones in Nashville. And I was just like, oh my goodness like (laughs) I was like lord like I don't know if I'm doing the right thing here you know like so um I know for me like the first release like actually was produced by like a producer that does like a lot of tv stuff but he also does so yeah he also does music too and um he works at the library and so the lord opened the door to just finish that song that I just really had this strong um in my heart this concept and um ironically like after I finished the song Riley Clemens came out with her version of um I'll never stop fighting for you and I was like oh man like the best singer in the world is now singing this song that was my song concept you know and I'm like whatever nobody's gonna want to listen to this whatever one now, you know? <laughs> and so this, so like the enemy just gets at you, you know, like, oh, there's somebody just saying about that, you know, and you're going to look like a copycat. But the Lord had writ- written that song in my heart a long time ago. And um, when I was walking through a period and he, Exodus 14, 14 really stuck out to me. And so, um, you know, went through the rewrites and rewrites and rewrites that we do. And then <laughs> brought the conference and got it um, critiqued. And um, uh, somebody had a uh, one of the speakers had a idea for like a different melody on the bridge. He's like, yeah, I liked your bridge. He's like, maybe you could do a second bridge and do this. And I was like, Ooh, and I just got rid of my bridge and just <laughs> did, did that melody on a second bridge and thought a new word. So, um, so um, like, I, I think that's the, the beauty of co-writing also is just getting a fresh idea or even just a way mm-hmm. to make your song, your song better. Like maybe it was okay or even decent before, you know, but but maybe there's a melody or there's, um, you know, a lot more words or deeper things that, that someone else can add to it. And, and for me now, I'm at the point where I just, I'll write down a concept and maybe like a few rhyming lines will come together. But uh, a lot of times if I'm coming into a co-write, I won't write a ton on a song because Mm -hmm. I know we're going to write it differently anyway. So if the Lord's bringing a lot of concepts and rhymes and stuff, and I love to pre-write, um, like just write a lot of it ahead of time. So I feel like, like it's been mold over in my heart and, and, you know, studied and meditated on But, um, but as for like bringing a whole song into a core, right. Usually that doesn't happen. Um, usually just bring like some poetry or maybe a melody, maybe half of a song, but I have to be willing then to like, let it turn into a different animal, which yeah. is totally fine. Cause to me, it, it always becomes a more beautiful thing. I love to write with people who are super good at like chords and, I don't know. I just feel like everything, even writing with all different kinds of writers can make a song stronger. And you see the ones that make it really far always have, you know, Seth Mosley talks about that. They always have five, to seven writers on them, you know? So, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they do. I know a lot of the songs I get to lead just this next Sunday, I was looking at that list um, earlier today. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of writers on that one. Maybe that's why I love it so much. And yeah, it's great. It's really great. Um, do you have any upcoming projects that you're trying to uh, really work on and uh, that we may get to hear uh, or experience eventually? Well, there's one that I'm working on with the my, I, I say he's the library producer, but I mean, he's really good. Like he knows his stuff. He's studied all of this stuff and his name is Khalil. He doesn't know um, Jesus. And so I'm praying also that that's another, you know, way to share the gospel with him and, yes. you know, through this, through these songs, but um, we're working on another one. And um, um, it's a song that I co-wrote with, um, with uh, Jonathan, Curtis Turner I'm saying his name wrong now I'm really embarrassed um (laughs) um um, so John Turn Band I think is 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 his um Instagram handle but um but it was a co-write and then um it was that was a song that actually had finished the whole thing and then come to a co-write thinking oh we're gonna do chords and we just like just totally changed the song um and it became more of a um song that people would sing in church so um I love the bridge bridge especially he's just amazing at bridges bridges. yeah yeah so he's 
Uh-huh. He's amazing at those bridges. So, but he just like helped turn it to another animal. And I was like, I really like the new version, you know? So, Sweet. so, um, so that's what is in the works right now. Um, but it'll probably be sent out to get some other mixing done on it. And, um, and then there's the, um, I really honestly, like I, t- I told my um, producer in the one that I'm working with on the hip hop R and B stuff. Um, in, in Nashville, I said, I really, I really don't want to sing anything by myself. Like I want to do everything as projects, you know, like it's always been groups and, and, you know, you sing as a worship team and it always sounds better with more people. So um, like, I'm hoping that on like half of the, you know, hip hop R and B stuff um, that um, that will be like, you know, combination projects. We wrote one, my friend Scott and I wrote one at the and it was his first hip hop song, actually. And I was like, hey, we could release this. And he's like, I'm going to pray about that, you know. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so he had a fun, he had fun of performing it for the group. Like uh, we we're all sharing our songs together at night. Cool. So that was just a blessing. And just, um, but, uh, but there's another one coming um, with Cornell Grace from Cameroon. Um, you've probably oh. seen um, he is, he's been a great co writer. And um, we've got to write several songs together. So we're actually, He's already recorded it and started, you know, did the demo and I just got to get back and get my vocals and send it to him once I get back to Florida. So, um, so I'm excited about that one. It's a theme that's been on my heart for the church for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so it's something my pastor always says. So, so, um, and then probably in the January area is the goal for, um, one of the R and B slash hip hop slash Toby Mac ish type of songs. (laughs) So. So I don't even know what genre it is, but it's fun anyway. <laughs> so that's exciting. Lots of lots of things potentially coming down the pipe. That's really exciting, Joy. Yeah, praise we'll look God. Forward to, yeah, and we're gonna link everybody to your um where everybody can listen and follow along as you release things too. Um, so we'll we'll be sure to link all of that in the show notes. And where else uh do you hang out online? Where can people connect with you? Um, I love Instagram, um, but I also have like a Joy Dane uh, Music Tribe Facebook um, group, and uh, I got the idea from someone else. They said they said something tribe at the end. I thought that's a cool name, you know, like mm-hmm. it's team, you know. And um, my regular Facebook page is Joy Richards Dane, um, and uh, and then we have Lake City Lights community, which is specifically for songwriters and artists and um, just like as an encouragement page. Um, so that's where that's being born. And, and uh, you know, we talk about the retreats on there, but also just kind of post encouraging things for songwriters that will encourage them on their journey. And um, yeah, so that's really try- cool. Trying to eventually, um, it looks like Lord willing, if, if as the Lord provides that, um, that might be a nonprofit thing next year. So, so really praying for that too. So wonderful. Oh, that's exciting. Um, great. Well, we will link everybody to where they can find you there. And, um, as we wrap up, I would love to pray for you and your songwriting efforts and then uh, we're going to get to hear one of Joy's songs at the end. We're going to tack that onto this episode. So she'll um, share a little bit about that song, but let's go to prayer. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll enjoy some of your music. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for this time to connect with my friend Joy and just um, be with her even from afar again today. And um We thank you for how you have called her into songwriting, um, that it looks, it looks different than other people's and that's good. And it's, it's, it's beautiful because it means that our journeys, our unique journeys are, um, they are also good. It is, it's a beautiful example of how you bring about your will in our lives Uh, for your glory. And um, I just pray that uh, you would continue to give joy, the peace and the um, contentment and the joy that she has uh, being a songwriter now. And um, 
that you've given her such a passion for others. We, we thank you for that. We thank you for her gift of encouragement and her willingness to um, be vulnerable with people uh, in the midst of encouraging others and growing your kingdom. And um, Lord, we pray for her efforts with her producers. We're excited to see what you do with what you've uh, written on her heart um, from what you're teaching her. And uh, we just, we thank you again for uh, just how you work in our lives. And we pray that you would continue to bless Joy and her family and her efforts, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Praying the same thing for you, Andrea. Thank oh, you. So much. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, what song do you think you're going to share with us today? Can you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> well, I was trying to figure that out and I was like, well, I just have one that's out right now. <laughs> so let's do um, it. I would love to like share the new one with you because it's a little bit more of the genre go- going toward the genre, but, but the one that's already out, um, is just the first one that came and, um, that ended up being recorded and, um, and we'll probably remix it and redo a new version later, but, um, Fun but it's called fight for you and it's from God's point of view. And, um, and yeah, it's based on Exodus 14, 14. And it's something that the Lord, um, just that verse stuck out to me in a very difficult time of life that I was just fighting with some depression and, um, mm-hmm. feeling stuck. And I remember just reading over the verse and it hitting me in, in a totally different way. And just like God was fighting for, for the Egyptians or for the Israelites, he was fighting for me. And, um, that's just his character. He loves his children. So it's called fight for you. And, um, I pray that it blesses you. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to share that with everybody and thank you for being a guest uh, with me. It's really fun when I can have my own personal friends on here. It's, yeah, I feel a little, so yeah, like I'm just going to invite my friends for a conversation. So you all get to <laughs> listen on all that today. So thank you, Joy. And um, I look forward to connecting for a co-write soon. Yes, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Andrea. Yeah. You're in the trenches, weary and better. Sometimes it feels like none of it matters. I know your heart breaks. I know your soul is in every burden, every mistake. When your faith is free.
Thank you so much for listening today. To see the resources mentioned in this episode, you can head over to theophanymedia.com forward slash joy. To support the show and join our patron community, where you'll get extra access and exclusive content, visit us at patreon.com forward slash creatively Christian. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Dave Ebert, and Rachel Anna. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer did our music. And Jake Dobrins produces and edits the show.